<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself You got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to the Cult Classic Horror Show. Um, I am your host, Danny Bonin, along with... And I'm Scotty Bonin. Uh, how's it going, guys? Good, <laughs> good, good to have you now, on. Now, we have a very, very special show today. Um, one, I mean, I've been excited as hell for this show. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And uh, the reason is, is because you, as you viewers know, you've watched a couple episodes, we love all things Evil Dead. And it just so happens that we have Betsy Baker herself, Linda, from the original Evil Dead on the show with us. Hey, Betsy. How's it going? Hey, guys. I, How just, are you? We're good, and we're just so happy you could join us. We want to thank you so much for joining us on this episode. We are big fans. We're so pumped. Believe it or not, I'm thrilled to be with you guys. Well, good, good. <laughs> now we, I mean, we have a we have a, an agenda here. But before we get going with Betsy, because uh, I know all you guys are, uh, we've got a lot of deadites listening, and uh, I know you're you're excited. But I just want to rattle off a few things before we get going. Uh, you can find us at cultclassichorror.com, as always. Uh, make sure you go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash cultclassichorror, and Instagram at cultclassichorror, and Twitter at cult horror show because. As we said before, everything on Twitter was taken. <laughs> yeah, darn Twitter. A lot of whole horror and cult there, so make yeah. sure you write, guys write those down. Um, cool, cool. So, so we're on the phone with Betsy, and uh, I'm just gonna we're just gonna jump right let's, into let's it. jump so, into this. I hope you don't Can mind. I, I hope you don't mind, back. Betsy. Yeah, we're gonna be grilling you a little bit if you don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. I can take it. I can take it. All right. Awesome. All right. <laughs> now, before we we jump into the Evil Dead uh, based questions, I I. I just want to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, your your history in the industry and everything, Betsy. I I know that you are have a theater background as well, and that you started, uh, you know, tap dancing for the neighbors at a young age. Is that correct? Boy, you've done your homework. Have you? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Have. You know, actually, I was just thinking about that the other day. I grew up in a really small town in Michigan, St. Joseph, Michigan, southwest corner. If, you know, we were doing this on camera, I could just show you the mitten with my hand. Oh, but, nice. Uh, think of the lower, you know, southwest corner of your hand there. The yep. palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm from. And um, it, it, it truly was, you know, the best street to live on. And I know everybody says that, but it was. <laughs> and uh, in the summer, we would put on these little talent shows. And I was laughing the other day because I realized we would put on these talent shows, meaning my my neighbor kid friends and I, mm -hmm. and yet there was nobody to come to the show because at that time you still really couldn't cross the street. You were still only seven, eight or nine or 10 years old. Yeah. Um, you, you really couldn't cross the street in the summer without your parents. Um, and if they could, they, you know, we lived right on Lake Michigan where they'd rather go to the beach than see some little lame, you know, talent show. So we would, we would rehearse all day and then we'd wait till our, you know, parents came home from work and we'd beg our parents, our moms and dads, to come down to this show, probably while they were having, you know, a gin martini or something. And and we'd put on this <laughs> show for them and we would charge them a quarter. Really? And, <laughs> That's okay. clever. Ah, oh, you've got to charge. You have to charge. Yeah. I mean, this was some money-making business back even then. Sure. And, um, so I used to tap dance and I used to do, I used to sing this song called, there was a song, I, I don't I don't know who did it, I don't, but it was called Hello Sweet Pea. And I would sing it, and we we would tap to it, and um, there'd be other there'd be magicians. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is like a variety show. Oh, yeah, it was a variety show, and we'd have a dog and cat would perform, and um, we'd have I don't know I think somebody was learning to play the flute maybe by that time, and and somebody maybe played the flute, and we had rigged up a little curtain across the garage door 
so that there was an actual curtain. There was an actual stage and an actual curtain. So, wow. you know, come on, guys. They really got their money's worth. Oh, money. yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm assuming there was not tons of fake blood yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> she was just a little girl. Come on now. It was, it was tap dancing. Ah, uh, yes. Tap dancing. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. I definitely would have paid to see that. A quarter? I mean, come on now. That's like a deal right now, there. Now, we, we talked about before we started rolling here on the show how uh, um, what we had – oh, we had in common because you know twins as well, right? And me and Scotty are twins. But another thing we have in common, I, I know you have a theater background. Uh, we come from a theater background as well. Our, yeah. our family owns a small dinner theater in Longmont where we're from. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And so we've, um, growing up, we, we were waiting tables. We were in the shows. Acting you know, and singing and stuff. We started too. out playing Tiny Tim, and now we're, we're ghosts of Christmas present, you know. So. Oh, my God. I yeah. love dinner theater. I did theater, dinner theater in Michigan, and I did theater in uh, North Carolina, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Okay. And um, I did dinner theater uh, down in Florida. It's a blast, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's love great. It. I noticed, too, that, awesome. that you played uh, Marion in Music Man. I did. Yeah, so that, I, now, yeah. we might be getting away from the fans, because you guys probably don't watch that much dinner theater, but but just on a personal note, I mean, we, we've we uh, done the show a few times, and usually we're in the, the barbershop quartet, so. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, it's a great time. Why? I'm, we should find a garage and a, and a curtain and a rope and put on a show. That's yeah, true. we should. I still remember all those harmonies, and I was the bass part, so yeah. yeah. It'd be easy. I'm in. I'm in, guys. You've got a summer theater in Colorado, I'm in. All right. We love dinner right. theater. We, we should have you come to Colorado and just have a candy on, do a sh- play Marion again. I, I'll do anything. I'll tap dance. I'll, you know, I'll do anything. Of course. That's awesome. Well, and so... Um, and I mean, you, you've actually, I was reading your, you're doing more of that. So these days again, right? Well, I stopped for a long time. I was doing, um, uh, dinner theater and musical reviews, um, basically down in North Carolina and in um, Florida with a group called Musicana. And then I did other things. And then I, I actually stopped acting completely for a number of years. I had a business, um, while we were raising our family, um, I was lucky enough to be involved in school activities and PTA and, and really kind of soak that all in. And my kids were active in, you know, sports and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I had a business that I had motorhomes that I would refurbish and make into production motorhomes or celebrity motorhomes. Oh, oh, and I would rent out to the um, uh, production business and here in the film and entertainment business so if wow. if you needed a motorhome you would call me and um we would work on location and it's a it's a, it's a huge business out here at least in the west coast and i know there are other cities that do it now and about eight or nine years ago i went sort of my our kids were grown and they were in high school and they could kind of feed themselves, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I started going back into acting, and one of the first things I did was um, a show called Judgment at Nuremberg um, with a great dramatic cast, including Catherine Ross from uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, and The Graduate. It, it, was, it was a great experience. And um, so I've done a few things since then. Wow. And I also did a um, about five or six, seven years ago, I did a number of one woman um, singing cabarets, and it was just me and my accompanist or my musical director, and we did uh, uh, a number of musical selections and then some um, humorous parodies, and uh, we might bring that back again sometime. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love to hear <laughs> your singing voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and you said you mentioned the PTA stuff. I, I saw that you're also an elementary school voice teacher, correct? I am. I'm, oh, a, okay. it's, I'm what they call a special consultant. Um, and I go around to different elementary schools, and I teach vocal music to basically the, the, the younger ones, the Ks, the first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders. And um, that, in, you know, I see up to, gosh, I see up to 1,500 kids a week. Wow, wow that's a lot. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's holiday time, so we're really working hard on our holiday songs, right? Oh, yeah. Holiday performances, which is really, really, really very sweet. <laughs> That's great. That's oh, yeah, great. You got to love those Christmas carols. So how many, I got to ask, like, while, you, while you're working with these kids, and I'm sure you interact with parents, do you ever meet someone who's just like a huge Evil Dead fan, and they're like, I know you? You know, that's pretty funny. Um <laughs> No. Okay. Um, <laughs> the parents, yeah. 
And there are a few people that come up to me after a concert and um, they know of my work mm -hmm. and they actually, I have a commercial running right now. And so, and it's been running a lot. So they have come up to me or the teachers have come up to me and some of the kids have come up to me, but mm -hmm. by and large, most of the parents have no idea. And that's okay. I yeah. like, you know, it's okay that I keep it a little separate. Yeah. Yeah. And is that the commercial you're talking about? Is that the Geico commercial? It is. Yeah. Uh, so we literally. We I, love that. <laughs> I, we were talking or I was talking to you, emailing back and forth. And I don't know. I think I, I just, I scanned you on IMDB real quick. And I was like, oh, the guy, I saw it in your email signature. And I was like, oh, Geico commercial. And literally like the next day we were both watching TV and it came on. And we're like, that, that's her right there. Oh, it's Geico that's commercial. That's Baker right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's awesome. <laughs> Just like Joanne says, that's yep. me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a hilarious commercial too. So uh, you deadites out there at the well, it might still be going while they listen to this in a few weeks from now. Oh, so, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. They can find it on the Geico site, and they can find it on YouTube as well. But it, it's going to be running for quite some time. Yeah, it's, oh, it's hilarious. It's one of the funniest so. Geico commercials I've ever seen, <laughs> for sure. Um, well, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll jump a, a little bit more into Evil Dead now. Everyone's probably frothing at the mouth. So <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask the first question, and, and me and Scotty will sort of you know throw the baton back and forth. But um, So how did you get involved in the first Evil Dead? I know that you know we, we hear the stories of a lot of it being between Sam and Bruce and how they were all college buddies. And I'm wondering if there was like a formal casting process, or were you friends with them in college, or how did that come about? Um, no, at really great questions. No, um, actually, both Sam and Rob met each other at Michigan State, went to Michigan State University, but not at the same time I did. And um, I, had, um, I had graduated from Michigan State, um, and I think they were attending Michigan State. In the meantime, I had done some dinner theater. I had done some music reviews. I came back to the Midwest. And I was living in the Detroit area, of which both Rob and Sam are from, and Bruce Campbell, mm -hmm. who plays Ash. I don't know if you guys know Bruce. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, anyway, they were in the midst or the beginning stages of making what they called a horror thriller. And I was um, working in Detroit. I was actually doing commercials there and a lot of industrial films, a lot of training films, um, a little bit of TV, a, a little bit of theater. And I was doing, quite frankly, a lot of live narration auto shows mm -hmm. as the narrator, as one of the narrators. Oh, wow. And they came to my agency and said, well, we'd like to, you know, meet some of the women that you have. And mm -hmm. at that time they have what's called a book and they can go through and, and look at all the talent. And they said, well, we'd like to know if we could meet with Betsy Baker. Mm -hmm. So, but they didn't really want to have an audition. They just kind of <laughs> wanted to talk to us about, uh, you know, possibly appearing in their film, which is a little bit, it's, it's a little bit, different than than how they're normally run mm -hmm. so my agent said these three young kids that's what she called them these <laughs> young kids met with us and they want to meet you they want to do a horror film and they want to meet you and see how you feel about that i went what do you mean they want to meet me don't they want to audition me don't they have yeah. you know lines that they want me to no they just want to have coffee with you and i went what <laughs> so the bottom line is i met them at an italian restaurant um at a wide, you know, a really well-known um, Avenue Boulevard there in the Detroit area. Mm -hmm. And um, I had no idea who these people were. Mm -hmm. So I thought, gosh, what if it's not safe? I mean, I could be like kidnapped and thrown in the trunk of a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> happened before, you know. <laughs> so at the time I was dating someone and he came along with me and kind of sat in the background. <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. as Watching as over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't need any protection because literally as I walked into this restaurant, there were three young kids. They were all in their tw early 20s. Um, I, literally, I believe 20 and 21. I'm not even sure um, Bruce was 21 yet. I, I don't like to <laughs> And they were in the corner having a root beer and they were playing with their straws with each other. They were having little sword fights. <laughs> and it was like one of these things like, what? I'm worried about this? Well, <laughs> We had a um, really great visit, and they I expressed that I was interested. I was intrigued by what they were doing. So in a, the next couple of days, I went over to Sam's parents' house because he was <laughs> living at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, we read a few scenes, and they offered me the part. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. 
I never thought I thought there was going to be an in in audition process. Yeah. You had like a competition <laughs> against other girls, and right, but you just right. met him for coffee and went to his I parents' mean, house. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if they drank coffee. I think they just literally drank root beer and Coca Cola or something. That's awesome. That's great. Bago, bago. That's probably what they had back there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, Betsy, was was there any talk of you being in e- Evil Dead Two then? Uh, yeah, actually. There was a lot of talk. We actually met for lunch about six years later. Okay. And uh, they asked me to, um, they asked me if I was interested in portraying Linda in more of a um, dream sequence part in Evil Dead 2. This was in um, spring of 19, spring or summer of 1986. Mm-hmm. And um, they had first said, you know, hey, look, it's tradition. Can we meet at a restaurant you know, <laughs> and talk over some things? And so I didn't tell them anything before I came, but... Clearly, when I arrived at the door, they knew this wasn't going to work, and we all laughed because I was married by then and I was pregnant. So. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, though. Yeah. Let me tell, it was a great thing, and let me tell you, it was really a good thing um, for you know for me that we were going to have a child and everything. But there were basically two reasons, you know, why they one they could not change the shooting schedule, mm-hmm. and number two, I point blank looked at him and said, you know, guys, I don't trust you anyway. You know, with your safety features and your, I mean, we we really had a tortuous time during Evil Dead One. Yeah. They said, oh, it's okay. We're, you know, it's going to be a whole bunch of different rules, and we'll take <laughs> care of you know. And no, it's not happening. Yeah. So I, I know um, how it was. And they understood too because they couldn't change their shooting schedule. So yeah. that was unfortunate, but I got a, you know, we have a great daughter and a great son. So. Well, that that sort yeah. of guides us right next into the next thing. Um, you know, we always heard about and, and read about and how grueling the shoot was, how, you know, there, there was no safety measures and it was freezing cold. And I, I mean, was there, has anything else compared since you've done that? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I swear to you, nothing. How this, hot it was. Well, you no, know, it was, it, it was, it was cold. Oh, it geez. was. You know, we originally were going to shoot the movie in Michigan, and they had been told it was going to be a very, very dreadful, bad winter, a really bad fall and winter. Mm -hmm. So uh, with what little money they had, they found a cabin. Um, They found a, you know, location person down in Tennessee, and they said, well, that's really funny. We're expected to have a really mild winter. Mm -hmm. So why don't you guys, why don't you all come down here? And for whatever reason, it flip-flopped, and it was one of the coldest (laughs) offices in Tennessee in history. And, of course, one of the loveliest in Michigan. And we're in a cabin in the woods that actually had no heat, no doors. It had no doors. Um, (laughs) No heat, no running water, no bathroom, um, nothing. Oh, my gosh. Um, And it because it had no doors, and this is the honest to God's truth, um, it was in a wooded area, but it was in an area where uh, cows were able to roam free. Uh. (laughs) And so really don't know that they shouldn't really deposit anything inside the cabin (laughs) so um yeah for the first two days we actually cleaned up the cabin wow oh my goodness cleaning out cleaning out cow shit from the cabin (laughs) that's awesome i had a carpenter friend who came down and did a lot of prop um props and carpentry making and he put on doors wow yeah so that oh that i mean we're i did hear I've read, you know, that a few people were even sleeping there. Were you one of the lucky ones that, that had to spend the night at the cabin a few times? No. no, no. Uh, there, God, no. <laughs> there were a few people, uh, a few of his friends, PAs, and, and uh, some of the cameramen slept there. Uh, and I think Sam slept there a couple of nights. And basically it was to keep, once we established a set, mm-hmm. and once we established, um, you know, cameras and location and some lightings, uh, because there were really just, artificial doors there were no locks there was no safety features yeah. somebody had to stay there because we were deep in those woods boys and um, oh, man. you know once they found out that there was a movie being made there mm. that's easy pickings yeah oh, yeah um, keep kids vandalizing and in so many locations so they always had somebody stay there spend the night there um just for security and just for safety but i have to tell you they really didn't spend the night they spent the day there because after three days of shooting the first two days out um, dr- our driving scenes in the car and along the country road and on the bridge, mm-hmm. um, we shot nights mm-hmm. because they wanted the night effect and they didn't have, you know, this wasn't a studio and mm-hmm. there were, you know, it wasn't a really well-made cabin, so daylight could always creep in and did creep in. And so we made the decision to um, s- 
to shoot all night. So we would shoot from literally like 7 p.m. until about 6 a.m. when the sun came up. And then um, there'd be some production assistants, PAs, or some grips or some camera people that would stay um, and sleep during the day. Wow. So they didn't get to sleep during the night. It was daytime. Wow. Oh, we all did. We all were up. We were all up during the night for about, well, I was there. My contract read for about three or four weeks, and I was actually there for about eight or nine weeks. Yeah, that was that was my next question was, you know, I know over time that, that people there, the cast and crew were dwindling and a lot of people had to stay a lot longer. And so you were one of those that had to, to stay and, and stick it out? Um, I stayed and stuck it out. I actually got one of the last lights out of somewhere in Tennessee on <laughs> December 24th. But then we did some pickup shots. I came back and did some pickup shots in Michigan in the middle of winter. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Grueling. Jeez. And as part of that grueling uh, set, I mean, I know you had to deal with the makeup, you had to deal with the, the things over your eyes, and, and were they actually, like, dragging you out of the cabin when they're dragging you out in that scene? Yeah! <laughs> I think this is! This was the real deal. <laughs> this was the real deal! Deep we in the woods. Well, you know, they say at the end of the credit we had a bunch of shemps, yeah. which were like, uh, you know, uh, stunt people. No! <laughs> no! Having all that, being yeah. a being a deadite and having all that makeup on and then the whatever the contacts or whatever you're wearing was was that grueling even just more just wearing all that makeup and looking like a demon you know f- coming up from the dead. Yeah, it was a grueling. I mean, truly, <laughs> nothing has ever been as bad since. Uh, but you know, you have to remember, we were in our early twenties. We went, wow, we're making a movie. This is just like when I was in my garage exactly. making the show. Um, but it was a lot more grueling. Yeah, we had. Um, we had to be fitted for, um, you know, the rubber masks and, and the whatever that's called, the latex masks, and that was yeah. grueling. And then about the second or third day that I had the latex masks on, and, you know, you have to glue it on and then put additional makeup on. So now you're underneath this rubber and plastic. Then you're putting the plastic um, uh, opaque uh, contacts in, which oh, are man. hard plastic. They sound like this. Gosh, gosh. Yeah. Wow. In your then eyelids. I'm being dragged you know through the car through the cabin down the steps and up the woods i said sam we got to talk <laughs> yeah oh my god you yeah. guys are getting roughed said, up oh my gosh you know and not and and we had a really great talk and it actually um we sort of morphed the character of linda into more of this sweet baby doll certainly ash williams was going to have a very sweet kind um um innocent girlfriend Mm -hmm. and I said how do you feel about her continuing that essence once she's turned into a deadite but in a really really creepy way and he said I I don't know what you mean he said you you look great with the mask on you look great being dragged out of the can everything looks great you know to Sam Um, but I said well like when she's in the door and we hadn't shot that yet I said what if we just make like have her sing a little song Instead of being, you know, just creepy monster, you know, have her take on her own character, her own life as a sweet person, but as a sweet zombie. And so we kind of made up this song, you know, and it it is the trademark song of Linda. And um, I said, what if we took off that awful, awful latex mask (laughs) and we really just took a a baby doll, you know, that a child would hold and just exaggerate those features, and that would be really red cheeks and overdrawn lips and overdrawn eyelashes. And he went, oh, my God, Betsy, you are really creepy. <laughs> so that was That's your idea. True. That's awesome. Now, if, wow. you, if you look at the film, you will notice when I am being dragged out after I've turned into a deadite, when I am being dragged out by Bruce, mm-hmm. I am holding on to my feet, not caring whether I'm was being injured or not which by the way I was but who cares <laughs> and I'm bringing it, you'll notice that I have the latex mask on yep I have noticed that the the face and looks totally different scene, yeah any yeah. other scene with Linda as a deadite mm-hmm. is with the um overdone baby doll makeup because wow. we made the decision after shooting that he said yeah and I think we can cover that I think you know we'll just Leave that scene in of, of you being dragged, you know, through the cabin because it worked so well. And yeah, yeah. It changed the rest of Linda, and it really turned out to be a great decision, I think. 
Oh, I, I do too. I totally and, agree. And yeah. one thing that that obviously you, that you don't realize yet because we're uh, we're we add on the intro after we've recorded the show is is we include a little bit of that lullaby in our intro. So <laughs> yeah, you have to listen to the intro. And the, <laughs> you are on it. Great, <laughs> good. Um, oh, wait. what's that sound? I, what's that sound? I think it's time for our horror halftime. It's the horror oh halftime. God. All right. Well, well, we're just this is where we take a quick couple minute break. And uh, we give the fans a little interaction. So um, this horror halftime, we are going to be playing What Would Ash Say? Uh Uh-oh. Just like we we actually did on a previous episode. So we have a new quote here in case you listened to the last one. Okay. Now, what we do... Wait, can I play too? You can, yes, yes. Yes. We would love to have you play, Betsy. Of course, Betsy. Yes. So uh, what we're going to do for... if, If you're not familiar, What Would Ash Say? We give you a famous inspirational quote... And then we ask you to finish that quote in Ash terms, right? So you can be as raunchy and cocky as cocky you want. Cocky <laughs> and just, you know, anything. All right, so here, here is our quote. The quote goes, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. That's, that's our, our complete famous quote. You guys might have seen that in school when yeah. you were a little kid. You know. But what I want you guys to do is say, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, blank. Okay, I want you to fill in what would Ash say, and here's how you do that. What would Ash say? We want you to go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash cult classic horror, and we want you to post on our page your answer. So once mm-hmm. again, the quote is, shoot for the moon, even if you miss, blank. So Facebook page, cult classic horror, and put your answer there. The winner will be our horror freak of the week. Horror freak of the week. Yeah, it rhymes. Freak of the week. Rhymes. That's yeah. out. <laughs> they will get some free gear and a chance to be on a future show where they can ask questions to someone hopefully as lovely as Betsy Baker. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's anyone as lovely as Betsy Baker here, but it's going to be tough. So offhand, do you, do you have a, a ash finish for that quote, Betsy? Well, Bruce would certainly, or Ash would, <laughs> Ash would certainly uh, demean somebody or something, and he would have no qualms about, you know, keeping it quiet. What's the quote again? And I'll it is a, uh, it is shoot for the moon, even if you miss blank. You can fill that sucker up and try again and aim better, you stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. like it. I like it. I, I, I heard Ash's voice exactly <laughs> like that, or Bruce Campbell, whatever yeah. you want to say. That was awesome. All right, so that that wraps up our horror halftime, and we'll jump right back into it with Betsy here. So um, we were talking about the shoot being grueling, um, and and I know I've seen the horror stories and the behind the scenes of of that of the plaster that you guys had to use to form to the face and everything, and and and, and of course we just heard how Betsy got out of that brilliantly and uh, created an iconic character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and didn't have to get dragged, you know, to take a second shot. You know, you yeah. can't. You, you don't <laughs> want to do the second shot. That was the problem. That was not going to happen. I, I put my foot down. I put my foot down in a couple places, but I said, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I was really injured when I was dragged through the cabin, but no, no violence for me today. Yeah. Well, good, good. Yeah, exactly. So, um, my next question, Betsy, is, um, so we know you have a theater background, as as we do too, but um, as have any any in involvement with uh, Evil Dead the musical? Has have you uh, seen the show or or um, have people asked you to hey you know, you? can you play your part in this show since you have a theater background? God, I wish wouldn't that be great? No, <laughs> no, I've never been asked to do that part, but we have been invited to a number of productions. Uh, one of the first productions was an off Broadway production up in New York, and so. They actually asked all three of us, Ladies of the Evil Dead, which is mm-hmm. um, Ellen Sandweiss, who plays Cheryl, and Teresa Tilly, who plays Shelley, yep. uh, a.k.a. Sarah York. Of course. Uh, that's another <laughs> yeah. show, by the way, you know. And um, Betsy Baker, who plays Linda. Um, so we were, you know, it was a great trip. We were flown into New York and, and went in the night before and saw the show and, you know, placed right in the splatter zone. Thank <laughs> you very much. Yes. And had a great time. It's a fabulous show. Um, I've seen it a couple of times. About five years ago, Michigan State University Theater Department uh, decided to do that for one of their fall venues, and um, it was really lovely. They invited me as a uh, as an alum to come to Michigan State for two weeks. I was able to see the show, and guess what? 
so weird. They put me right in the splatter zone again. <laughs> of course they did. Yeah. And I ended up staying a couple of weeks, and I taught a few classes, and I lectured. And um, I actually even, it was the week of weekend of homecoming, and the theater department made a huge float. And here's me, some old broad, you know, who was Linda and a Michigan State alumni on the float. And it was really a lot of fun. That's so, great. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We've we've seen Evil Dead the musical a couple times too, and uh, we saw it. Uh, I saw it in, in Vegas, and we've seen it here. We saw a university do it here too, and yeah, uh, Colorado State did it. Colorado and then, State uh, did it. Actually, yeah. a theater up the street from us did it too, just recently. So, yeah, so, great show. And of course, when we see these characters, you know, Cheryl, Shelley, and of course your part, Linda, we always think of you, the ladies of the Evil Dead. We're like, ah, oh, no one could do it better. No one could do it better. <laughs> oh, well, well, it's a very, very clever show and extremely funny. Oh, it's and, so hilarious. Yeah. So hilarious. It really, really is. And there's, we've seen a lot of talented people do um, a lot of the characters. And, you know, the splatter zone, that that, that whole thing is just such so popular. Yeah. I mean, oh, people yeah. just, like, no pun intended, they kill to get into the splatter zone. And uh, it's a great, great musical. And if anybody is out there that has is anywhere near a city that's showing Evil Dead the musical, it really is um, a, a super, super show, and, and they should catch it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great. You it's fans great. need to go out and check it out. Get your Splatter Zone tickets early because they will sell out. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> so I have I have a few other things, but I didn't want to get quite off of, uh, of Evil Dead yet. We, um, we, we've talked about how grueling it was, and at the time when you guys were filming – uh, I mean, I'm sure you you couldn't have, but but did you ever think it was going to get this big? No, no. It's uh, you know we get asked that a lot at conventions that mm. we attend, you know, all over the United States and actually all over the world. And pretty much uh, every convention, we're at a panel or a large Q and A or a discussion group. And sometimes we have um, done commentary during the movie, which is pretty damn funny if yeah. I say <laughs> myself. Um, no. There were times when we would literally look across the cabin from each other, which was no more than 12 or 15 feet. Mm -hmm. And we were basically saying, you know, either through our eye, you know, our contacts or either them in or out or mm -hmm. through our latex masks, like, what the hell are we doing here? How, <laughs> yeah. What do we have to do to get out of here? <laughs> yeah. I'm quitting. I'm walking out. You know, they Just can miserable. finish this, you know, without us. Um, <laughs> and yet we stayed and we finished it. And yet... There were a number of us, and remember, there were only five people in the film, and maybe at the most, at the very, very most at any time, there might have been mm, six or seven additional people on the set. Wow. wow. Cameraman, you've got a couple of grips, you've got a director, and you've got a couple of PAs. That's it, folks. Jeez. Um, it wasn't 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 people like you see on a set today. There was oh, no yeah. coffee. There was no motorhome. There were no trailers to go to. There were no portable bathrooms. <laughs> It was it. I mean, we could literally, uh, we all lived together in a large house um, and a three-bedroom house a couple of miles away. I mean, we could get everybody there in two cars. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and uh, there were times when a number of us thought, you know, it's too bad because this could have really gone somewhere. But <laughs> Yeah. No, I know, and I know it took. I know it took a little bit to take off after that. But, I mean, it had to have been sort of uh, – I don't know, fulfilling or pleasantly surprised, you know, like, oh, we didn't do all that for nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was never there because their drive, their desire, um, uh, their decisions to continue with this and never give up is really a true testament to themselves back then and obviously today. Yeah. 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 With, with Without a doubt, I mean, we think it's the most – popular cult classic film I will, we love of all it, time of course, you know yeah. the first yeah. Evil Dead you know I mean it's classic Army Dark <laughs> or Evil Dead 2 and Army Darkness are great but the first one there's just something about it that's just the you know the most classic out of all yeah. you know it's just great so yeah. well and, and um, uh, what do I have oh oh um, I guess if you were to nail down is there like a certain filming experience or, or um, moment, something that was most memorable about memorable. Sorry about shooting on the Evil Dead. Whoa, something most memorable. Yikes. <laughs> There's like every moment, huh? <laughs> yeah, either every moment was memorable or forgettable. What is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I do remember there was a scene once he dragged me up the hill. Um, mm -hmm. I really was buried alive. Really? Yeah, really was buried alive. 
they had um, during the day a couple of PAs, friend, all were friends of Sam and Rob and Bruce, and they came down. They wanted to be in, you know, they wanted to be involved in the movie as well. And they dug a trench. I mean, they dug a, a three or four foot deep trench, and it was about six feet long. And I walked onto the set that night and I said you guys gotta be kidding me I'm not going in there I'm not I'm not doing that <laughs> and I literally remember it was it was um, very very cold it was below freezing you can see some of the you know the, the you know the steam the breath, of the yeah. out of mm -hmm. our mouths when we're talking or when I'm screaming or when yeah. I'm <laughs> that's and, uh, how cold it was yeah and I thought I went back to this house where we all slept and they pulled everybody's blankets off the beds and um they said, well, now it's going to be a lot cozier down there for you, Betsy, because we, we, you know, we covered it in blankets. It's crazy. <laughs> like that fixed everything, right? That fixed everything, yeah. Like cold dirt on you. <laughs> yeah. And the very, actually, the two nights that we shot that was the same two nights that we shot, um, that Linda was being hit in the head by the, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the beams. The, yeah, the beams, right? The foam beams, right? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, foam. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Hard foam? <laughs> Sam had told me that they were going to be styrofoam beams. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what's styrofoam? It's nothing, you know. Yeah. We all grew up with styrofoam, you know, um, what I want to say, coolers to take to the beach. That's yeah. lightweight. Okay, I oh, can yeah. It's not a problem. <laughs> but what had really happened is that they had gone to the local Sears in Morristown, Tennessee. And at that time, believe it or not, they sold um, wooden beams to place in your den or your family room, I guess, in the basement that looked a lot like wooden beams, mm -hmm. but they were made of very, um, very strong and sturdy and very dense styrofoam. <laughs> wow. So you're going, well, okay, that's fine. You know, it's styrofoam. What's styrofoam? Yeah. No, it's not. It's like <laughs> just this short of being real wood. Yeah. <laughs> Still like getting head, hit, hit over the head with a, yeah. with a real a wooden soft beam. piece of wood, right? <laughs> So the first time that Ash or Bruce actually really hit me over the head, we had to yell cut because I screamed so loud and I screamed so loud and so badly and so, let me just say, angrily towards Sam yeah. that, um, yeah, I accused him of trying to kill me. <laughs> Not towards and, Bruce, uh, who just hit you, right? No, he was included in it, too. He was being direct, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we had to make some adjustments. Those two nights were really rough nights. That wow. that much I have to say. Those were really rough nights. Wow. Oh, wow. man. <laughs> but us as fans will never forget those moments. So True. Hopefully yeah. it was worth it, because we was, love those scenes. Every second. <laughs> so... I know that uh, now farther down the line, you you briefly worked with Sam again on uh, Oz the Great and Powerful. How, how yeah. was that? Uh, it was an experience that was unbelievable. Um, uh, Teresa had been working a couple of weeks, but one of his executive producers called and said, because um, I had run into him at an audition earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, you know, look, Betsy, we're shooting this. Can you come in? And so it was really a great honor and a great thrill uh, we were just in a very, very short scene. But it was interesting to watch Sam work, um, you know, 25 years later. Mm -hmm. And we had all been sitting around in sweat jackets and gloves and mittens, you know, in a little tiny, dirty, grungy, um, you know what, filled cabin. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, um, and we shared coffee out of the same styrofoam cup. And, and um, gosh. And now, like that. Yeah. And, and now we were working in a huge, huge, you know, rebuilt studio in the suburbs of Detroit. It was phenomenal to watch him work. And, you know, he, he truly is just a master of his craft and very creative and yet very genuine and very humble. Wow. He would come off to the side and talk to us like like 25 years had never happened. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Joking around and just hanging wow. out. So do you do you keep, I don't know, I mean, not, not daily or weekly, but in general contact with a lot of, like, Bruce and Sam and the ladies and everyone from that experience in The Evil Dead? Well, we spend, the ladies, uh, we're all very good friends. We spend a lot of time together because we actually go and travel to these conventions. Yeah, and I've seen that, yeah, too. I have yeah, seen that. Yeah. That's right. So, um, the ladies I, of The Evil Dead. Uh, Europe, and um, we traveled around for a little bit, you know, before and after the last couple of times we've been in Europe together so that's been great fun um, do I have Sam and Rob over to celebrate my birthday or Thanksgiving no <laughs> but we do see each other um, uh, we see Sam so I mean we see Bruce sometimes at um, conventions because mm -hmm. we'll do them together sure and um, yeah so it's you know see Sam every once in a blue moon yeah so it's it's been a lot of fun 
Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so that actually brings us for our next question. Um, speaking of Bruce, you know, and seeing him and and whatnot, and obviously we're seeing him now on the new series on Stars, Ash vs. Evil Dead. So I was going to ask you, Betsy, what what are your thoughts on the new series, Ash vs. Vers- Evil Dead? Uh, Have you seen any of it? Or Yeah, we were yeah. actually at the premiere. We saw yeah, the, I uh, saw pictures of that, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you, if you noticed, but there are just a couple of few seconds of, um, you know, his old girlfriend Linda in uh. Uh, episode one. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. We did. He's doing that. the flashback. Yes. There you go. Yep. Yeah. At some point, you know, at some point, somebody has to have a flashback at least a few seconds. So <laughs> flashback to the classic. Who knows? Who knows? Everybody has said at conventions, you got to bring the ladies. You got to bring the ladies in. You got to, you know, you got to bring them back as somebody else, something else. Yeah, that's what we were uh-huh. saying. Yeah, yeah, we want you guys back. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, from your mouth. <laughs> of course. Um, uh, no, I thought it was great. I think it's. Uh, very funny. Although I have to say, I think Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi are two of the funniest people that I've ever worked with. <laughs> very creative and very funny. Um, when I've when we've spent time with Bruce, we we just have a very funny funny time. Lots of laughs. Uh, very well written. Very creative. I I see it going for a long run. Yeah. 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 Do you, um, I mean, are, have there been any talks of a cameo appearance or anything like that? Not not counting the one. The flashback? The, not counting the flashback, yeah. Uh, no, not that I know of. Okay, okay. Yeah. We were, we were talking, sorry, I was going to say we were talking to, to Danny about that. And, uh, you know, would you be, I mean, he said he'd love to get in on the action. Is that something you would, if, if they brought it up, would you, would it be fun to go do that? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. I wouldn't you? I would I would yeah. love it. God, I love oh, yeah. it. Well, sure. us us the fans, we're going to we're going to push hard for yeah, you. Yeah, I was telling oh, you guys. God, guys, yeah. We were yeah. talking to Danny about um we I actually saw somewhere just on the online community in a couple groups that there is uh, sort of a uh, an outroar coming and maybe even an official petition trying to get a lot of the old characters onto Ash versus Evil Dead. So Really? Wouldn't that be terrific? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would be and great. I, and I think that, you know, the the fans usually get what they want, right? So yeah. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you know, we'll make a big of enough noise for, you know, yeah. Sam and, you know, whoever yeah, the producers. Yeah. yeah, we mentioned together this summer and Bruce just happened at a big Q&A of, I think the room literally held 4,000 people. And um, um, some one of the fans said, you know, are you going to, you know, bring in the ladies and bring in some of the old cast members? And the crowd went absolutely wild. Oh, and gosh. Bruce just kind of blushed. I mean, he just, I don't think they expected that sort of reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, so, yep. But you never know. Yeah, you know? that's great. Well, exactly. I think, yeah. Well, um, I think that sort of wraps up the Evil Dead stuff. Before we go, I did want to talk a little bit about your new movie coming out. Uh, I think January, is that correct? Uh, yes, yes. There's a new movie coming out called Lake Erie, yeah, but yeah. it's not spelled like Lake Erie. Yeah. Here's a secret. It's spelled Erie, E-E-R-I-E. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. And actually, I watched so brilliant. I watched the trailer, and it looks really good. We both watched yeah, I, it. I actually freaky. watched it like three times. It's, yeah, it looks really, it looks really good. Thank you. I think it's going to be a, a, um, I think it's going to be a, a, a surprise little hit. Uh, it's about a young woman who tragically loses her husband and starts to make her life anew somewhere else. And um, then you have the three dots, you know, dot, dot, dot. And that's where it goes south quickly. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the previews look awesome. I, I think if you guys listening to this, definitely want to check out the preview. Lake Erie, it was on YouTube, and uh, it still is on YouTube. You can see the, <laughs> and, the, uh, the, the trailer on YouTube, the and, official trailer. Uh, it, it is definitely... Uh, you're back in horror action in the vein of, of I guess, where you sort of started and how does that feel oh it's great i tell you i love these character roles and um you know it's been a lot of fun i've 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 done some roles like on nbc's the middle mm-hmm. true blood er south uh, new i saw new girl that's like my wife's favorite show new girl yeah yep. but it's really fun to have some of these you know kookier parts it, that those have been a lot of fun too oh um, yeah Oh, yeah, well, totally. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I I hadn't seen it until until I was uh, you know we were going to interview you and and I loved it. I loved the 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 preview, so I'm gonna have to check that out for sure. It'll <laughs> it'll it'll bring back some memories from the first yeah. Evil Dead. Like, you oh, look, you look like you sort of, back. It sort of looks like you're back you might horror. be like the crazy old lady in it or something. Uh yeah, actually, well, I'm not the crazy old lady. <laughs> I'm old. I'm just the 
the neighbor who's been here on the lake for a long time. Let's just leave it at that. She's point. wise. Oh, yeah. She's we don't, wise to everything. We don't want to give the everything away. Neighbor, the wise nosy neighbor who's been on the lake for <laughs> a long time, probably longer than she should have been. Now, is there um, – we we talked we said it's on YouTube. Is there anywhere else the the fans should go to subscribe or check that out or anything? Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I know that you can go to Lake Erie the movie. Dot, I think it's Lake Erie the movie dot com. I'm not quite sure, but okay. if you even Google Lake Erie with the two E's, two E's. at the beginning, um, you'll be able to find some more sites there that have you know some previews and some information. Sure. And then um, any awesome. anything else that you'd like to promote or mention or send the, the Deadites to to check out? Gosh, well, you know, at the beginning of the year, and I'm not quite sure when, they'll just have to keep their ears and eyes peeled. Mm -hmm. But um, CBS is coming out with a new show called Rush Hour based on the, um, you know, the movies. Um, yeah, yeah. With, the, with Kevin Hart. And the, yeah. yeah. And, uh, or no, not Kevin Hart. Uh, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker, yeah. 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 And uh, they, they've begun a series now, um, a show, a weekly show. And uh, I'm in the, um, well, I think I am, gosh, <laughs> uh, in the first show or the premiere, okay. uh, which, which was the pilot. And I think it's really going to be a great show as well. And not because I was in it, because I'm only in it for just a few seconds. But um, what I saw when I worked was really funny and creative and uh I, you know, wow. I think it's going to be really good. That's Rush great. Hour on CBS. Okay. We'll keep our eyes open for that then, too. Oh, definitely. So. Yeah. Well, that, that wraps us up for today. We really appreciate you joining us, Betsy. I know the fans really appreciate it. This has been an awesome oh, interview. They're going to be psyched. Yeah. Oh, they are oh. psyched. You guys are psyched. Yeah. So glad. <laughs> so, That's well... well, we'll keep our eyes open for Lake Erie. Oh, once again, before we break, um, definitely... All you guys listening, uh, find us at cultclassichorror.com, on facebook.com slash cultclassichorror, and uh, Instagram at cultclassichorror, and Twitter at culthorrorshow. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so once again, thank you, Betsy. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Uh, this was so much fun just uh, learning your whole endeavor through Evil Dead. Yeah, and uh, yeah. um, it was I know just everyone great. will love it. So. It was great for us even to actually learn about yeah. it, too, and... It, it, we're yeah. we're so psyched. So well, and I can't wait to work with you guys at your dinner theater. We'll yes. keep you updated. Definitely, oh, we definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, have a good good night or day, whatever it is where you're at, and we'll see you on the next episode. See you next time, guys. Bye, guys. Don't you blame the movies? Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> There will be blood. <laughs>